Next, we will recognize the Outstanding Community College Professor of the Year. And the winner, winner is Robert Cheney, Professor of Mathematics at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. Introducing Professor Cheney is his former student, Andy Hees. Andy? Thank you. One quality that makes a great teacher is the ability to gauge the student's understanding, requiring a sense of what others are feeling. A tall order in a classroom full of students while lecturing, performing calculus, walking about, and discussing mathematical history. Somehow, Professor Cheney is able to determine what even a single student may be non-verbally communicating, thereby reading when a class is engaged or when a student is falling behind. As an engineer, I marvel at his ability to process the various signals his students radiate while continuously testing said signals against his own experiences. Upon noting a student falling behind, my professor would not give up that one student easily. He would redouble his efforts to bring them back on board. Throughout life, this is a crossroads. Why bore the larger group who are adequately following along to pick up the much smaller group who did not follow? Professor Cheney gracefully manages this crossroads by re reiterating the material such that some will come to understand the material and some will have their understanding deepened. All benefit, none are bored. Critically important student interest is sustained throughout through this uh, infectious enthusiasm, a great sense of humor, and by using creative real life examples and experiments, effectively answering that eternal math question, when will I ever use this? <laughs> <laughs> he also retains interest through his true genius as a teacher, which I have saved to lastly discuss. It is a simple concept with a resounding depth. He never answers a question with the answer. In our society of opinions and uncertainty, answers are so valuable. But when you provide somebody with an answer, it is at that moment that a person stops thinking about the question and begins thinking about the implications of the answer. My professor wants students to have the answer, but he exerts great restraint and patience to not provide it. Instead, he hints, guides, eases, prompts, and encourages towards the answer. Never allowing frustration to build. As such, the student's mind must probe, search, question, adapt, and ultimately learn the answer. This provides a depth of neural activity surrounding the learning event, ingraining memories in a student's mind. I recall such an event 10 years ago in a calculus class. Mathematicians divided irregular areas into smaller sections, getting a very good approximation of an answer. One day, they realized that by dividing uh, dividing by infinitesimally small sections, the approximation became an exact answer. This realization led to the Industrial Revolution, and the teaching of it led me to understand calculus and become an engineer. I hope you have an understanding of why this gentleman is here now. It is my honor to introduce Professor Robert Cheney. Hello. Thank you so much for having me here today. I want to thank uh, Andy Hees for his kind introduction. I want to thank the Council for the Advancement and Support for Education and the Carnegie Foundation for this very great honor. An award like this is a reflection of many supportive people that have influenced me throughout my life. I'm a third generation teacher. Both my grandmother, Janet Loudner, and my mother, Elizabeth Cheney, were teachers. I know if they were still living, they'd be very proud today. As a student in high school, I would have never believed I might someday become a math professor, let alone win an award such as this. My guidance counselor warned me to avoid algebra <laughs> for claiming it too hard for me. Nevertheless, I took that first algebra course and survived it. Through hard work, coupled with an intimidating fear that I would not succeed. Interestingly, that first course turned out to be the hardest math course I ever took, and math seemed to click for me from then on. I went on to study math at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and there Professor Robert S. Smith took special interest in me and shared his fire and passion for math, which further influenced my career path and I ended up pursuing a doctorate in math. When I began teaching as a graduate student, I'm sure I was not a contender for any teaching awards. <laughs> I, 
I was focused on my own mathematical interest in set theoretic topology and on my own career goals instead of on meeting the needs of my students. In a typical lecture, I endeavored to be as clever as possible in my presentation of the material without showing enough concern on whether students were engaged in the learning or connecting with the material. In 1983, though my academic life was right on track, I had a series of personal discouragements that brought me to a point in my life where I called out to God for help and I began a relationship with Jesus Christ. My life was suddenly transformed with a new outlook and I began doubting the importance of my former life goals. Instead of focusing on mathematic achievements, I felt directed toward working to make a difference in the lives of others. Much to the shock of my family and friends, I left the university without completing my doctoral degree and began working in a ministry to the developmentally disabled. I found this job rewarding in ways I had never experienced in the academic world. I began to appreciate the value in every person, regardless of the level of their abilities, and found joy in helping individuals reach their full potential. After a few years, I got married and moved to Dayton, Ohio, and I began to pray for a new opportunity to serve people. Among other things, I considered becoming a missionary in Haiti, working with the Salvation Army, or working in a home for troubled youth. In the back of my mind, I sometimes wondered what the purpose had been for all those years studying math, but I felt so fulfilled in service-type ministry that I thought math would probably never resurface. Then someone suggested I consider applying to a college I was not familiar with, Sinclair Community College. In researching this opportunity, I became aware of a mission statement that has been in effect since Sinclair was founded in 1887, which is find the need and endeavor to meet it. I felt directed to apply at Sinclair, and thankfully, I was hired. I had thought it necessary to make a life choice between working in mathematics and working in ministry to people. But now I saw it was no longer necessary to choose one or the other because at Sinclair I was able to serve people through the avenue of mathematics. All the seemingly disparate pieces of my life came together and working at Sinclair became my dream job. As a faculty member at Sinclair I felt called to exhibit and expect academic excellence while finding and meeting the needs of students at their individual levels. Sinclair promotes innovation with the goal of engaging the students in the subject matter so they will persevere and find success. Sinclair encourages collaboration in and between disciplines to provide a more seamless transition for students from one course to the next in one department to another. I have benefited greatly from this collaborative spirit. Together with my colleague Fred Thomas in the physics department, and aided by several grants from the National Science Foundation, we've co-created, among other things, a calculator-controlled robot, which brings together math, physics, and engineering to aid students in learning algebraic functions. Students are challenged to make the robot navigate a maze, collect data, and perform various tasks. Through hands-on real-world activities such as this, which contextualize math, students learn to develop algebraic thinking skills that extend beyond the classroom. This function thinking in a specific physical context helps build a strong foundation for students' general understanding of algebra. They learn to think mathematically when faced with real problems, to see math as a tool that will help prepare them for careers and higher learning. I want to thank Sinclair and all my wonderful colleagues over the past 24 years, including President Johnson and the team here with him here today, for the contributions they have made in making Sinclair such a wonderful place to work. I also want to thank my wife, Maida, and my other friends and family members for their continued support throughout my life, and I thank the Lord for his ongoing help and continued direction. Thank you.